everyone. My name is Jennifer Gunji Balzun, and I'm the director of Japan House. And I would like to welcome all of you, both near and far, to our Arigato no Kokoro event. It is a full day extravaganza for Japan House. I feel like we don't know how to do little things. We like to do it all and, and impact you in one day. But uh, we welcome you all so, so much to, for, and thank you for joining us today. Arigato no Kokoro is a theme that we're using not only for this event, but really to guide us for the entire academic year. Arigato no Kokoro means uh, thankful or grateful heart, mind, and spirit. And that's what we feel like we have. We are so incredibly thankful and grateful for all of your, all of our supporters, all of you, of our friends, of our family, the administration that has supported us throughout the years and the legacies before us of Professor Shoso Sato and Professor Kamiko Gunji, who continue to do really hard work for Japan House and continue to share traditional Japanese arts and culture with all. We couldn't have gotten to where we are today without all of you, so we thank you so much. Today will be uh, a multitude of activities, of tea ceremony, martial arts, other cultural performances, and if you stick around for the entire day, which we ask that you do, please join us at the end of the day around four o'clock we are finally going to break ground for the Ogura Sato Annex. It's been much anticipated and waited for for such a long time, and we couldn't be more pleased to be able to share that as a live virtual event and for, for some people to come in person also. We're so pleased that the administrative, this administration is so supportive of us in coming to speak and other guest speakers at the time, at, at that tonight, this evening, and then also some performances, some surprise, wonderful performances. We also will have thousands of cranes uh, throughout the Arboretum that you'll be able to see. And um, we thank all of those volunteers and students that helped create these beautiful symbols of peace and happiness that we want to share with all of you. Thank you all so much for joining us today, and I hope to see you throughout the day. Thank you. Arigato gozaimashita. Introducing Japanese artist Zenkyu Niwa. When visiting Japan in 2007, then director of Japan House Kimiko Gunji saw a calendar featuring a cute chizo, a Japanese Buddhist figure, and the message, Mawarui Kokoro, or Around Kokoro. Kokoro, Kokoro is a Japanese, Japanese word encompassing multiple meanings, including mind, heart, and spirit, and is one of her favorite concepts in Japanese culture. Gunji Sensei was surprised by his use of Kokoro to describe his art, and phoned him to make a connection. In 2008, Gunji Sensei invited Zenkyu and his wife Hisako to be a part of Japan House's 10th anniversary celebration. While here in Illinois, Zenkyu offered many workshops at Japan House, as well as an exhibition of his work. Japan House was gifted one of his jizo during his visit. It is often displayed in the Tokonoma and has become a cherished treasure since then. Last fall, Zenkyo's jizo was featured during our November Month of Gratitude social media campaign, and now our jizo greets guests and passerbys on Lincoln Avenue near Japan House. Zenkyu san taught himself art and started out as a graphic designer for a company in Tokyo. He later returned to his hometown, Utsumi a small village near the ocean in Aichi Prefecture. Zenkyu serves as a lecturer and artist for a local cultural center and nearby elementary schools where he teaches painting the Jizo figure, as well as crafting it out of paper mache. In spring of this year, Japan House director Jennifer Gunji Balzru reached out to Zenkyu-san to design special characters for Japan House based on Shichi Fukujin or the Seven Lucky Gods of Japan. Chichi Fukujin are an eclectic group of deities from Japan, India, and China. Only one is native to Japan in Japan's indigenous Shinto tradition. Three are from the Hindu Buddhist pantheon of India, and three from Chinese Taoist Buddhist traditions. Each deity existed independently before Japan's artificial creation of the group in the 17th century. Images of the seven appear with great frequency in modern Japan. Let's get to know the seven happy gods. Dai Kokuten. Prior to being introduced in Japan, Dai Kokuten was a Hindu warrior deity named Mahakala, 
and represented the god of wealth and prosperity. He is well known for his pudgy face and happy looking smile. He carries a bag on his shoulder filled with money and holds a magic mallet or uchide no kozuchi in his right hand. Bisha Monten. Originally from Indian Buddhism, Bisha Monten is the god of warriors but not war. He is also a god of defense against evil. Almost always dressed in armor with a fierce look and wide stance ready to defeat evil. In one hand, he holds a lance to fight against evil influences. In the other hand, he holds a treasure pagoda, or stupa, which is his main identifying attribute. The virtue he represents is dignity. Ebisu. Ebisu is the god of fishing, shipping, and commerce, and is the only one of the seven happy gods to have his origins in Japan. Ebisu is very popular among the people who work in the food industry, such as farmers, fishermen, and sailors. Representing honesty, he is often shown with a big smile and wearing formal court clothes or kazari eboshi, a pointed hat folded in the middle. Ebisu holds a fishing rod in his right hand and carries a large red snapper. Fukuro Kuju. Brought from China's Taoist Buddhist traditions, Fukuro Kuju is the god of wealth, happiness, and longevity. Represented with an elongated forehead and white beard, he is usually represented with customary clothes of a Chinese scholar holding a walking stick with a scroll tied to it. He is the only one of the seven that has the ability to revive the dead. Zhu Lojing, described as a Chinese senin or an immortal, Zhu Lojing is the god of longevity and is commonly presented as an old man wearing a hat with a long white beard. In one hand, he carries a nobby walking staff with a scroll tied to it, on which is written the lifespan of all living things. In his another hand, Zhu Lojing holds a plum, another Japanese symbol of longevity. Hote, from Chinese beliefs, Hote, aka Budai, is the generous god of happiness and abundance. He is supposedly based on an actual person, a Chinese hermit Budaishi. He is represented as a Buddhist monk with a smiling face and a prominent belly, holding a sack that never empties, and a fan said to be a wish-giving fan. Outside Japan, he is known as Laughing Buddha. Ben Zaiten The only female of the seven happy gods is Ben Zaiten, or Benten for short. She represents beauty and joy and was originally the Hindu goddess of water. Every major city in Japan has a shrine or temple dedicated to her. Places of worship number in the thousands and are often located near water. She is one of the nation's most widely venerated deities. In Japanese tradition, she is the goddess of music, arts, and knowledge. Her common form is a beautiful woman dressed in a flowing Chinese-style robe and playing the biwa, a short-necked wooden lute with a plectrum, a small flat tool used to pluck or strum a stringed instrument. The Shichi Fukujin are an excellent example of the way Hindu, Buddhist, and Shinto beliefs live side by side in Japan, influencing one another and even lending each other gods. According to Japanese legend, they travel in a ship called the Takarabune, which is said to be filled with treasures and comes from the sea to bring fortune and prosperity, prosperity to everyone. It is said that if you leave a picture of the Shichi Fukujin below your pillow on the night of the last day of the year, you will be lucky and have good fortune the whole new year. Thanks for watching, and enjoy the day! Okay, well, hi everybody. This is Michael Darren, the Education and Engagement Coordinator for Japan House. I'll be your MC for this hour. Hopefully you enjoyed that little video, um, just a little bit about uh, the celebration that we're about to have. Uh, I'm right here in the tents that are closest to our parking lot F32, although that is uh, private, uh, not open today. We want you to park in Vet Med or across the street in uh, Lincoln, but uh, you're welcome to come out and see us. So uh, in this tent, they're getting set up right now. If we wanna see Diana, she's, uh, I'll stand over here. Diana is part of our tea group. And uh, they're going to be doing teas every half an hour here starting at 1230. And then the last one will be at 230. So it'll be right in this tent. It's open air. Uh, we are requesting, although I don't have a mask on right now, uh, just so you can hear me a little bit better, um, we are requesting that you wear a mask if you come out. So follow me here.
We're just going to check in with a couple of our characters. That is Hotai. He's our uh, god of happiness. Let's see. So we have a lot of cranes all over the uh, Arboretum. So that's one of the really fun things. All summer, we had students, we had volunteers, we had some of our staff make these beautiful cranes. Uh, cranes are a symbol of Japanese culture. Uh, they go back uh, a long time in a lot of Asian uh, lore and, and uh, stories. But uh, these we made special out of uh, paper. And at the bottom, it says, Arigato no Kokoro. And that's the theme for today. That is uh, with a thankful heart and spirit. And we're just thankful that we're here. Uh, we're having a light festival today as part of our uh, fall open house, just welcoming people back in a nice and sort of um, gentle way. And so what we have set up today, besides the tea ceremonies that you could come and kind of watch, it's a come and go sort of thing today. Uh, we want you to experience a lot within each hour. And so this hour, we'll be visiting over with a tent over on this side, has Ikebana in it, which is Japanese flower arranging. We'll come back and we'll see a, a, a tea ceremony over here, part of a tea ceremony. We'll go this way right now. We're going to see what happens up here. So when you come to Japan House, normally people know the back of Japan House. If you've never been here, uh, this is our parking area and our delivery area. But we've set up a light uh, cafe where you can get a bowl of matcha and uh, a uh, sweet. Let's see if we can get one um, so we can see what that means. Do we have a, how are we doing a bowl of uh, sweet? Can we show that to somebody? Oh, here's somebody who had that. Yeah, so right here, do you mind being on, uh, we have a live feed going. So they just got a matcha, a bowl, matcha and a sweet up here at our welcome tent. This is Lisa and uh, Grant, and they're here to help you out today. We have t-shirts for sale. And so I'm wearing an exclusive t-shirt uh, and they are as well that you can order online or we're taking pre-orders for it. Uh, also, we have a wonderful t-shirt that all of our volunteers are wearing today. Uh, it was designed by the same artist. It's a beautiful red t-shirt and uh, on the back it has the name of the festival. And you, if you didn't pre-order, some people did pre-order, but if you didn't pre-order, you can come here and see Lisa and Grant. All these wonderful people from our uh, Ernest and Gay group way back there. They're all here to make a bowl of matcha for you. Never had matcha before. Somebody come over and tell us about bowls of matcha. What's matcha? Come on, don't be shy, right? It's not the time to be shy. This is Kirsten. She's never shy. She's kind of like me. Tell us about matcha. What, what are we going to be doing? What um, could somebody expect? So matcha is a Japanese green tea. Jap it's a Japanese green tea that is made from uh, very young tea, and it's uh, ground into powder and then we mix it with hot water and whisk it to a light froth and so when you drink the matcha you're getting the whole tea leaves uh, it's very healthy lots of vitamin C um, and antioxidants and also delicious and we are also giving you a little matcha meringue sweet with your tea so if you that come Lisa May. that Lisa, Lisa May Lisa. Ah. yeah so come have tea yeah, with us so that's how much today, if they come here, they can buy it? $10, so that's a great, um, yeah, and so t-shirts are 18, and then we also have some cans of tea if you wanna go home and have tea at your own house. Uh, unlike most of our festivals, uh, this is in the back of Japan House. We're not out in the Arboretum today. We're gonna walk over, look at all these nice people enjoying their afternoon, say hi, you're on our live feed. Hey, thanks for coming. We're going to go over in this area. So what we have in this area is called Ikebana. Ikebana is an ancient Japanese uh, flower arranging technique that really uh, speaks to the flower more than the arrangement. And I've actually personally taken some classes from Kimiko Gunji, who you'll meet today for sure. And um, we're going to go over and we're going to meet Jeannie Holly. She's the president of our local chapter. And she's probably making a fascinating arrangement right now. We can kind of go watch her and see what she's up to. Look at all these nice people watching this today. So we're live on our live stream, everybody. Hey, hey, Jeannie, how are you doing? Yeah, so why don't we come up here? Do you do you mind if we kind of videotape from the side here? We'll kind of move, just look at Jeannie, I guess. Yeah, yeah. So you can kind of show Jeannie for a little bit and I'll talk, I guess. Yeah, so Jeannie's making um, a certain style today. So one is done down here already, and that's called freestyle. So there are still rules with uh, Ikebana and freestyle. Doesn't mean you can do anything, right, Jeannie? Well, it also means you can just use flowers in a very beautiful way. 
you freely use the flowers. I was saying on the way over, Ikebana to me always was more about the flower than the arrangement. And so that's kind of like a big difference, I think, when you look at flowers in Ikebana. So did you get any of these materials from like your own garden or your own yard? So one of the best parts of Ikebana is you take it from your own garden. You don't have to go to the grocery store. And that makes it really seasonal. And so everybody here today, you kind of came out, it's fall. Um, mostly you'll see some fall materials. It'd be kind of awkward right now in Ikebana to see something like a, a daffodil or a tulip. Um, but certainly in the spring, I've taken many um, lessons with Jeannie and we use those materials almost singly sometimes. We'll just use uh, just one of those materials, but multiple stems. And you look at the way they're shaped and you sort of look at how they um, engage with each other. So yours is making one right now that's like in a line or a row. Is that correct? Yeah, this is Shoka. Okay. So I, we talked a little bit about the Mizuki, which means everything is coming from this one line of flowers, as if it's all we all come from the same source, and that's sort of the philosophical idea of it. But it's also a transforming place. It transforms from the vase to the ikebana. So you, I may, I hope she introduced herself. Sydney is one of our recent students and graduates from our Ikebana class here at the University of Illinois. We have an eight week uh, class and we haven't had that in a year. So we were really excited to have 15 students. And she was part of a exhibit at the School of Art and Design in the Link Gallery. So that also was new for us this year to be able to offer that to the public because we've never, usually we have it inside Japan House and don't let people in. And so this way, um, Let's go talk to Sydney for a little bit. I'll go around here. Oh, this is another one. What style is this? Oh, that's pretty too. Shoka. So Sydney, thanks yeah, for volunteering for today sure. with me. Sure. So what did you think of the class? What did so, you think of it? Yeah, I loved the class. It was very different from kind of, you know, the Western style flower range. And you kind of think of like big full bouquets. I really loved the Ikebana style, which more is centered around kind of this space and the placement, like you said, the flowers itself more than the whole arrangement. Was it in only eight weeks, actually seven times, that's not very many, you learn the art form of something with Gunji Sensei. Who here knows Gunji Sensei or Kimiko Sensei? Yes, uh, she has taught many people, uh, hundreds of people probably, uh, Ikebana and all of her little tips and tricks and her stories is a really wonderful class that we're able to take here at the university. Well, we'll let you guys uh, get back to the quiet, contemplative uh, Ikebana, and we'll go see martial arts here, I think. Why don't you follow me? All right. So that was really fun. Um, you can see different things all day today. Um, in fact, we are going to, let's see, do something really live. We're going to see uh, one of our people here. How's it going? We're live on our live stream. What are you up to today? <laughs> You're delivering and assembling, right? Yes. So um, Lowell has actually been working with us for quite some time. Tell me your title again. Uh, I'm fabrication coordinator for uh, the Department of Architecture. We love working, Japan House loves working with all different departments. And one of the things we love is architecture. And Lowell and I and Jennifer, our director, got hooked up a couple years ago. We've done a lot of different things together, but he took on a project for us, which was making something to go outside. Anyway, well, we'll leave you be, you can set it up anywhere. Okay. Yeah, I think people would just see it. This area out here would be fabulous. Cool. All right, when we come back in the next hour or something, we'll see how he's uh, doing. Let's check the time here. Oh, we got plenty of time. All right, so Gio, who is my uh, wonderful uh, camera guy today, has been out to Japan House many times, he says. We're gonna go over the hill, I think. That seems very dramatic and um, one of the things he said he liked is just coming out here to like hang out, just kind of be. So if you didn't get a ticket or you don't want to come to the festival, the Arboretum is just a great place to come and hang out. Um, over on this side of Japan House, we have tea ceremonies going on also. And so we're going to go down. Um, I'll tell you a little bit about um, the style over here. And so traditionally, uh, and you'll see in the main tent, uh, when you do tea ceremonies, you are uh, kneeling on your legs and in a way is called seiza and sort of like this. And as people get older, of course, not everybody can do that or sit like that. Um, the grandmaster decided to develop a way to do tea where people could sit upright. And that applied even to the tea master who was giving or performing the tea ceremony. So the style of tea that we have going over on this side of the Japan house is called rurei or table style. 
And you'll notice, uh, I'll have my photographer, my camera guy here, he'll kind of come in, uh, will be a little bit quiet, but kind of come in from the side and you'll be able to see they're kind of sitting upright. Uh, the guests are sitting upright. So this was a way for actually Americans and Westerners to enjoy a tea ceremony, something that they hadn't been able to do, mostly because of the, uh, the way that it had been performed or sat for a while. So come through this way. This is our beautiful garden we're in, by the way, uh, Jim Byer. We have a special clip later uh, you'll be able to see uh, featuring Jim. Our garden is just as old as Japan House, and so it's uh, 23 years old. And so this garden was started by Jim Byer uh, at the age of 70. And so this is one of our most beautiful spots. We have a couple more volunteers here today. You want to say hi? Hi. What's your name? I'm Ray. Ray? Hi, I'm Fran. And how did we get you guys a volunteer? What part program were you with? Uh, Oh, the APO, yes, yeah. and so we're I'm so happy. Yeah. Oh, say it again. I'm also from the APO. Oh, good, yeah. good, good. Normally we have you guys at our Matsuri Festival, and that happens right at the beginning of the school, and we meet a bunch of students that have never, sometimes even heard of Japan House or even been to Japan House, and what happens is we say, here, work four hours, do this, do that, greet thousands of people or sell tickets to thousands of people. So this year I actually feel less uh, crazy and like a little bit more manageable. So we're online right now. We're just kind of encouraging people, even if they've never been to out to the Japan house, just to come out, kind of look around, look at the uh, beautiful cranes and see the tea ceremonies. Yeah, so you'll meet the students that we have here at University of Illinois too. All right, let's go over here. We'll kind of be quiet, but uh, anyway, you can kind of see from the side, uh, there are a couple of um, guests waiting. It actually isn't happening right now. So why don't we go and see martial arts and can I talk about Japan House a little bit? Um, and maybe we have one starting. Maybe this is a good time. Are we starting the tea? Oh. Oh, good. Okay, so this is a great time. This is uh, some of the other members. We're live here, by the way, on our live feed. And so these are some of the members of our Earth Sink AT study group that um, hasn't really been able to be back at Japan House the same length of all of us. And this is our first time being back to the public in a really long time. So we're super excited to have you here. As I was saying earlier, this is the table style of tea that they're going to be uh, using. Uh, the one that we're over there, they're going to be doing the, the tatami mats. And so you'll see kind of the difference as we go back and forth. And then um, we'll kind of be quiet here for a second and let you guys get started, if that's OK. Yeah? All right.
get out of the uh, group chat here, but uh, if you want to turn back for a second, just kind of see the number of people uh, that we're encouraging to uh, come out, uh, stand, you know, with your family, and uh, we're going to have tea ceremonies happening all day like that in these two areas. So very excited to have the tea group back. Uh, let's go this way. We see some wonderful guests. Wave, you're on our live stream. Yay. <laughs> All right. You see everybody's having a good time out here today. We couldn't be uh, happier with the weather. We really lucked out. Um, a couple years ago, we actually had rain for the week prior, and it just is so stressful when that happens. Uh, and so we really are happy to be out here today in the sun. So um, let me take a minute here to talk. Let's see. I'll get in the spot here. Oops, the bushes, where you can see the uh, beautiful pond in the background. Uh, at the start of the hour, we uh, checked in on our Day of Giving page, and we uh, decided to uh, have this as a Day of Giving uh, for Japan House, uh, just to continue uh, raising money for all of the things that uh, not only do we currently offer, but all the things that we really want to offer in the future. Um, the plans for Japan House, as we'll uh, be joined today by Shozo Sato uh, for groundbreaking, is for an annex. And that annex is going to add so much to what we can do for not only students at the University of Illinois, uh, but for the public in uh, Champaign-Urbana and, and visitors uh, to Champaign-Urbana. So i um, very excited. Uh, at the beginning of the hour, we had already raised um, or had 10 donors out of our 77, and I'm sure that we're already there. We our seven is our sort of our number this year because there's seven happy gods. And so Jennifer put them together and uh, we're doing 77. And um, so we uh, already had 10, over $3,000 raised. And some of the names we just want to shout out to, Tristan, Joshua, Allison, Ella, uh, Sam, uh, Kimiko, who is our first donor, and another Jennifer, and so and some anonymous donors. So we just want to thank everybody who does support Japan House. If you come out here today and you didn't buy a ticket, um, that's okay. Uh, we just had a $5 donation. Just to kind of like just kick it off, uh, you can always make a donation or buy a t-shirt or support Japan House in any other way. So we're going to walk through now our Cherry Tree LA, which uh, if anybody uh, came out here this spring, it was literally the place to be. Uh, Japan House had never had a bloom like this. You see all the wonderful people coming through. All the happy people again. We just met you. Hi. You're coming back for more. So we're headed through what's called the Cherry Tree Alley. It um, is about uh, 13 years old. These are the sakura or cherry blossoms. And so in the spring, cherry blossoms are so important. They reinforce um, an ideal of impermanence. Uh, there's a saying we will uh, often remind each other, which is Ichigo Ichie, which uh, loosely translated means one life or one opportunity. And so today we're out here. It's a one chance to celebrate together, one life, one opportunity to celebrate just our uh, where we are. And our theme, Arigato no Kokoro, uh, written here on our T-shirt, that really uh, reinforces that for all of us. Just thankful uh, to be able to get back together. Hello. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to go see some judo. Uh, we are um, so lucky to have quite a few uh, youth groups and other um, martial arts groups here in Champaign-Urbana. And they have been longtime supporters. And so uh, today, um, I think every hour almost, if it's not every hour, it's almost every hour, we have a different um, group coming. And we're just going to stop here for a second, and we'll just let you watch as they uh, are doing some of their uh, falls, I think, here. All right, Sensei, hi. Hi. So this is Grace, and um, you want to tell a little bit about uh, your organization? Oh, talk. oh. hello. Yeah. Oh, hi. Yes, I'm Grace Toulousen, and I'm from Kokushi Midwest Judo on the west side of Champaign. Um, we've been operating since 2016, and our mission is just to um, show judo to Champaign because there hasn't been a lot of judo in Champaign. So we opened this dojo just to like bring it to the kids and have a, a large presence. So we currently have about 30 students in the dojo. Uh, and we're up way above pre-pandemic numbers and everyone seems to be having fun and uh, judo is a martial art of throwing 
and it's an Olympic sport. Um, so what are they practicing now? They are practicing rolling falls. Uh, before I have them do any kind of throwing, I want to make sure that they are uh, competent in s protecting themselves. So they learn how to take a fall, they learn how to roll, uh, side falls, front falls, falling in all different directions. And these types of falls, um, yeah, again, all these types of falls are really helpful in, um, in life because like, you know, rolling on a, or, you know, slipping on a pool deck or some ice, uh, knowing how to fall really comes in handy, especially when you're, when you get older and you've done judo since you were little, uh, they'll help you not sort of injuries. break yourself exactly. as you get older, you roll exactly. with it. Yes. Is there anything people need to know if they were to like be interested in judo? Like, do they have to be able to do any certain things? Or? Nope. We have, um, Zoe here who just fell, she's been doing judo for about three months. Uh, she's excellent. Jackson just started and he's, he's taking to it like a fish. So you start um, yeah. out sort of at their level, yep. and then each one is encouraged to do different things. Yes, and the... yeah, and the and the older kids, the higher ranking belts, they all um they they encourage the other ones, and they help teach, and it's all about like mentorship and you know uh, helping out each other. Can we meet any of the students? Yeah. Anybody want to say hi? <laughs> okay. Oh, there you go. Tell us a little bit. Who wants to tell me why you do judo? Stand up here. You're new. Why, why did you pick judo? Um. It trains your mind and body, and it's really fun. It's fun, huh? What else? What did you think? I really like it. It's very fun. And, um, Are you the first one in your family to take it, or uh, other Yes, it? my brother takes it. Yeah. He's um he just started last year, I think. Ah, now are you able to do stuff together at home, or that's too dangerous with the furniture? Uh, we are able to do stuff at home. Oh, good. What about you? Have you been in it in a while? Yeah, I've been in it for four or five months. It's okay. pretty fun meeting people like Maddox, Devin, Zoe, Gabby, Jackson. It's pretty fun. I kind of like that it's all ages. It's kind of like how I grew up with all different ages. So, you know, you just kind of get everybody together. What about you? Uh, I like it a lot. It, you get a chance to meet a lot of new people. You get um, a chance to train your mind and body. And yeah. What's the hardest thing you do? Like, what's the most challenging thing? Probably throwing. Throwing. Oh, spalling against Pete. Yeah. Oh, spalling against other people. Okay. Can you demonstrate any of that for us? Gabby and Zoe will throw spots. So the whole point of judo is for them to get. Oh, so the whole point of judo is to get to throw your opponent, or your partner, on flat on their back. And so they they're grip fighting, and they're just trying to like right now they're just trying to trip each other and get a good grip and. It's all about helping each other out. So you're really kind of helping and, you know, you're not trying to hurt each other. No, ever. No, no, right. It no. looks aggressive. It looks like, it, you know, you could hurt somebody, but you do it in a safe way. You teach yes. them safety and respect first, right? Yes, yes. Yeah. And it's all very controlled um, and no one's in it to win, you know, win practice or anything. But we do, I mean, you can't go to the Olympics with this. So when but, you say Olympics, what would you do then at an Olympic? It's all about sort of how they do things then, or is it the tosses or the... Like, what is this, a point maybe? What would you do to gain uh, a higher standard than another person? A full point is uh, throwing your opponent flat on their back with oh. control and force. So that's what they are going for. They're right going now. for it, yes. Yeah. Yes. Hopefully they'll go for it. <laughs> <laughs> but Zoe's very new. Gabby Gabby helps a lot, and she, she's very good at helping. You guys, anybody else want to try it or see a, something else that I you know, do in exactly. class? You guys want to do some throws? Why don't you throw each other? Okay, go for it. So judo always starts and starts and ends with a bow. It's, uh, respect is so important in this sport. I think in a lot of the, you know, sort of we do the same thing. You know, you sort of respect is the heart of a lot of yes. the things that we teach. Yes. I think if you come to that with the experience, it really changes it. Yes. Because that's really at the core of, of just right away. Right. You set yes. that tone. You yes. don't have to, you know, we're starting out. Yes. Totally, 100%. Uh -huh. yeah. yeah. I think that really is important. And I think for young people right now, uh, you know, it starts dialogue too, yes. because it's like respect right away, you right. know. Yeah. I love this. This is really fun. We've never really had a chance to kind of walk around and talk to you guys as we, you know, had the day. Yes. Uh, so people can come out here. This is free. Uh, this is uh, open for all afternoon. These, uh, these guys will be here for the next, you know, 30, 40 minutes or so. And the next group will come and uh, kind of set up. But uh, we do thank you so much for thank coming you. out today. It was an opportunity for them to perform again, hopefully. Uh, next year we'll yep. be back in the Arboretum and all you can toss each other everywhere yes. on a on a bit much bigger stage. <laughs>
and uh, we put you by our um, one of our seven happy gods, Jirojin. So he's longevity. And uh, we thought he should live over here by martial arts because of that same reason, just sort of like that longevity, that knowledge, and sort of like knowing and uh, seeing each other and how to respect. We've got a couple of interns back here. Let's go say hi to them. Hi. Trevor and Paul, what are you guys up to? We're on the live. Watching judo. Has a lot of people been out here today? Yeah. Uh, Paul's one of our interns, but he's also going to be doing some uh, demonstrating at two or three at two. Yeah. Uh, but anyway, you're welcome to come out. This is free and open. Lincoln Avenue's right there. If you need help, just talk to Trevor or Paul. They're uh, very nice gentlemen. Uh, like, like I said, they're part of our intern program. They actually did uh, the narrating for a lot of the stuff we do. And uh, each one of these characters, uh, they narrated on our uh, video. So I forget which one I picked for you. Did you watch the video? No, you didn't see it yet? Anyway, you know, I had you read the, uh, oh, you were, uh, yeah, Fukuro Juru. I can have Fukuro Kuju. Yes, wisdom. Well, thank you, Paul. That was very nice. We'll come back and see you when you're probably on the other side of the uh, camera doing something anyway. Is that part of it right there? Oh, Kendo, wow. Oh gosh, yes. Well, this is gonna be really exciting. All right, we'll kind of head back. Thank you guys. Thank you, Grace. So here's some of the public out here watching and engaging. All right, anybody wanna be on our live feed? Say hi. This is just on Japan House YouTube. It's not like on the news, but you know. Why'd you come out to the Arboretum today? Did you know about this event? Oh, good. I, I know one of the kids involved, Jackson, and I also uh, basically grew up here. My mom there worked at the Japan House for how many years? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're around. Yes. Oh gosh, no! I can remember a lot of things. Were you part of the founding? Like when it first started with the uh, Yes. Yeah, so this is a wonderful experience. Nancy was with the organization all the way back with Shozo. We were meeting today. You know him, right? Yeah. For many years. I know Kamiko, but much better. Yes, of course. Was in, it know, was in California, but uh, you know the whole story and the whole Japan House yeah. thing. So, well, thanks for coming out today. Yeah, sure. And yeah. nice meeting you again. And uh, thanks for being online here. Yeah, sure. we're, we're doing about 50 minutes of live. And so this is kind of new. Okay. We'll never go uh, Facebook, hopefully, and YouTube, probably, and our, our website. Yeah, thank you. Well, let me duck under the cranes. We've got a lot of nice uh, young people out here today. We're on live here. Anybody want to say hi? No? Okay, I'll walk backwards. I'm getting a text. That's what happens. Um, let's see. We're going to head back here. So these are, like I said, these are the Sakura. Um, uh, this spring was one of the best um, times we've ever had. So the idea, once again, is that uh, you got to seize the day. This uh, spring, we definitely did seize the day. And um, we had thousands and thousands and thousands of people come out and uh, see our gardens out here. And so that was really the first time we had seen quite a few people back in our Arboretum since um, probably the beginning of 2000. So right here, we're going to step over, show you a couple things here. Uh, on the other side, over across the pond, we have an area where we've uh, kind of expanded our footprint over the last uh, probably 10 years or so. On the left-hand side is a little structure, and it's called the Azumaya. And that structure was built by Nick Offerman. And Nick is a huge uh, supporter of Japan House. He's an alumni of the University of Illinois. And uh, he and Shozo Sato toured the world uh, in the early 90s doing kabuki and uh, was, um, is a huge, uh, like I said, supporter. So he built that uh, in his workshop in California and then uh, sent it over and came here and installed it. And then um, on the other side over here, we have a bridge, which is uh, Kimiko Gunji Legacy Bridge. And so those are our two founders. Shozo was the founder of our original Japan house at um, California and Lincoln. Uh, that house was torn down in 1992 or so, and then this house was built in 1998. 
Uh, recently, the Arboretum and us have put together a walkway in between the two of them. It's a very contemplative area. Probably won't be going over there today, but uh, it's a nice area to come and see Japan House. We have a little furry friend joining me. We have a lot of furry friends out in the Arboretum, right? Hi, buddy. How are you? Little girl. Yes, out enjoying the festival. Everybody can come out today and enjoy Japan House. It's a perfect weather. Thanks. Nice seeing you. We're going to head back over this way and kind of make our way back to the main tent. Um, so we have three more hours of uh, activities going on just like this. Uh, coming up in the next hour, um, we have uh, CU Poetry joining us. That's a local poetry group, and they're going to be doing haiku uh, on the spot and um, uh, also uh, just other poetry on the spot. Really fun. Um, we will have tea ceremonies all afternoon, and um, you can always tour the garden and uh, bring a little picnic and hang out uh, this afternoon. Let's go back up this way here. So Japan House has a lot of little fun paths and little areas, and I hope you're kind of seeing what, what we get to see all the time. Um, it's, we're super lucky to work here, and uh, Jim Beyer, like I said, who's the main gardener, he has developed this, and, and really we get to benefit from his hard work from uh, 20 years of hard work. All of our volunteers who um, you'll see a, a little bit later come up, um, they work so hard. And so if you're interested in helping us out and being part of Japan House Garden and um, being helping uh, Jim uh, help maintain the uh, garden, uh, you can always email us at uh, japanhouse at illinois.edu. Um, this is one of our other volunteers. You want to say hi for a second? What's your name? My name is Sid. You want to hold the microphone for a second? Oh, yeah. Put my mask back on. Course, course. So, um, are you part of our uh, Alpha Phi Omega? Yeah. Oh, great. Part Why did you decide to volunteer today? Um, I mean, I've been to Japan House once before. I took a little walk through here. It's a really beautiful place. So, yeah. I thought it'd be really nice to help out and so help other people experience that. So, what's the reputation? Like, why did you hear about it before? Um, or had you heard anything before? About too? Japan House? Yeah. I mean, I've just heard people like it, just walking through. That's why I went that one time well, over the summer. You just kind of got to go there, is what yep. say. Yeah. Very beautiful place. Yeah. Just very, a lot of cultural events, too. It's great. Good. What year are you in school? I'm a junior. Okay. Well, you still have some time. We have some classes coming up in the spring, and then next fall, uh, we're starting a Japan House minor. And so people can actually come to University of Illinois, study um, all different kind of cultural aspects uh, through Japan House, tea ceremony, ikebana, uh, some anime, manga. Um, yeah, I don't know if you knew that, but anyway, yeah, we have a new, what's your uh, major? I'm an econometrics major. Oh, okay. Well, you need a little art, you need a little matcha, you need a little bit of that in your life while you're working on numbers and press, yeah. pressing uh, schedules. And well, we thank you, Sid, for sure. coming out. I'm sure. Michael. We probably met at some point or maybe not. I'm not sure. Thanks for coming. Let's go over here and uh, see where we're at uh, time-wise. All right, we're going to cut through the... Uh, area here. Let's see. Excuse me. Boop. We have a little tent set up back of Japan House where you can get a t-shirt. Uh, you can sit and have a wonderful bowl of matcha and a little meringue sweet. And so um, if you didn't uh, get a ticket online, that's totally fine. Uh, we think there's a nice number of people out today, but it's not too crowded. You definitely can kind of be out and about. Um, let's go over here and see what's happening in this tent. Uh, yeah, what? You're live. You're live, yeah. So you just can see them. If you, um, it's just really to walk around, um, you know, that registration, just to we're kind of trying to manage the people. We weren't sure. You're welcome to walk around. We have Ikebana happening over there. Uh, in a tent just north of the house, we have some martial arts, which we just saw, some judo. Yeah. And then tea ceremonies happening right here, and one on the other side of the house right over here. So sort of like all the time, they're just kind of one after the other. And just. Yeah, well, we wanted to do something light, and uh, if you've been out here before, it sounds like maybe you have. Um, we weren't sure, you know, and so we've planned, and we've canceled, actually, and planned and canceled, so we felt pretty comfortable. And then getting the approval for this afternoon, we have a groundbreaking for a new annex that's coming up. And so we're very excited. That kind of kicked off today, and um, we're calling it a day of giving, too, for that reason, just to kind of uh, help in that. But uh, Shozo Sato, who's one of the main uh, founders, and then he's the donor, him and his wife, and his late wife, and then brother-in-law. And so we're getting a shovel in the ground this afternoon. 
and so excited about that. Yeah, but you're welcome to walk around. It's a kind of a lighter um, touch today. We just wanted people to come and enjoy in a way that, you know, you just kind of walk around and uh, see what's going on. Okay, yep. You're welcome. Thanks for being online with us. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna take this off so you can see me once again. So we're coming back over the hill. And um, as you can see, this is near our parking lot. Uh, so it's on the back side of Japan House, which we've never really used this area. It's quite lovely. Um, so I'm going to um, go around here to the front. Let's go inside here. So right now we have Diana, who's one of the um, tea study group. She is doing a little explanation. So. We're just going to kind of go in closer and see what she has to say. Um, they actually have beautiful designs on them. Our red ones actually don't have anything on them, but the um, colorful fukusa show that someone is very high ranking, similar to a teacher. And they can also be decorated with motifs to celebrate. Maybe it was made for a monumentous occasion or something, or an anniversary. Hi, so we're on live here. So we're having a question and answer with Diana. Hi. We have our founder, Kimiko Gunji, Jennifer Gunji. You want to pan over there, say hi. We are uh, just ended a tea ceremony. We just ended a tea ceremony. Yeah. Um, and I guess I can talk about, hi, my name is Diana. I'm the education associate. Um, we'd like to thank the Illinois Arts Council Agency. Um, Chabako, the very special kind of outdoor tea ceremony that we are doing today is something that we've been studying as a tea group and myself included um, during this entire pandemic under Gunji Sensei. The idea behind Chabako is that it's meant to be done outside, um, almost like a picnic style tea ceremony. Everything is stored inside a convenient basket or box, I should say, and everything comes out. We make tea and then afterwards it goes back in and it's very easy to transport. But um, we were awarded for 2021 the uh, Illinois Arts Council awarded us the MAP grant, the Master Apprenticeship Program. And so we were able to use that funding to continue studying Chabaco and to get the necessary equipment needed to do this part. So that's the tea that's going on out here today is yeah. Chabaco? Mm -hmm. So we were over on the other side and we were watching that. Anybody from the tea group want to say hi over here? Hey. So uh, the next one's coming up then in, um, at the beginning of the hour or so? Uh, every Yep, at the start of every half an hour. So um, let's see where we are with time. We'll leave you guys alone here. Thank you. All right, we have about five minutes. Let's come over this way. All right. Okay, so uh, kind of came in right at the end of that. Uh, I think in the next hour, or maybe in the following hour, we'll sit down and we'll have a, a live shot of that tea ceremony. And so you can uh, see what that means, Chabaco style. So. Um, uh, Diana, who's our education associate, she is, uh, like she was saying, awarded a special um, grant through the Illinois Arts Council to study this particular way of doing tea ceremony. And as part of her uh, studies, she is teaching our other members of the community um, what to do. So um, you can see right now it's kind of letting out. The guests um, just kind of gather underneath the tents here. And uh, we have lots of room for people to sit down or just to kind of uh, watch one of the tea ceremonies. Um, it's free, you can come out and enjoy it. Um, if you want a bowl of matcha, that wonderful uh, bowl of tea that we're serving, uh, you're welcome to go to our tent, which is our main uh, Japan house tent, and um, get one of those and maybe buy a t-shirt if you want to. So um, we're gonna be checking in here with our interns uh, in just a second, who are gonna be uh, taking over uh, for me for the next hour. Um, let's see if we can get anybody to talk to us here today. We can find somebody. Put my mask back on here. Jennifer, do you want to say a couple words? Yes. Yeah. yeah. So this is live. This is Jennifer Goody Baldrud, our, our director. She uh, started it on the video, but this is her live here today. She's busy running around. She's part of our tea group and um, really managing the whole day. Should I, hold? I don't know. Yeah, go ahead. So, hi everyone. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you're enjoying so far. It is a glorious day here in Urbana. We couldn't have been more blessed to have 
such a beautiful day. And um, if you have, I'm sure you've looked around, but we have so many cranes that are hanging here. These were all folded by volunteers, community members, students, and my staff. And it's just really kind of a wonderful token of happiness and peace. And that's what we wanted to share with everyone. And we hope that you are really enjoying our programming today. We hope really soon that we can do an even larger festival. We're thinking in 2022 um, in the fall and we can join together at that time. But please continue watching. At four o'clock today, we're actually doing our groundbreaking. It will be broadcasted live. So we're super excited about that too. So thank you so much for watching. We appreciate it very much. Thank you. Thank you, Jennifer. All right, so uh, we're getting ready to change over here. We have a lot of changeover happening. Uh, we were able to see the Ikebana for a little bit and uh, the judo, uh, the tea group. Uh, the one thing that's happening the whole time though is we are having two ceremonies. And so the next hour coming up, um, you can stop by. Uh, right now, I believe it's uh, one o'clock or nearing one o'clock. We're gonna have a, a little video that um, will um, showcase um, some of the things that are happening uh, the present time at Japan House and uh, some of our favorite moments uh, here at Japan House. Um, hopefully um, you're able to uh, see in the background here, we have one of our uh, seven lucky gods or seven happy gods. And um, you can learn more about those by watching the videos that we have online. Our t-shirts feature that. So this is a special order t-shirt. And uh, if you wanna order one of those, you just go to our website, uh, japanhouse.illinois.edu. And uh, you can order this. And uh, we also have our t-shirt, which is our um, red t-shirt for the festival online today. So um, hey, Caleb and uh, Tara, they're going to be coming up next. You want to come under under here. It's, I think it's a little bit easier with not, not so much. Um, so we're finishing up this hour. Uh, but these are our two next uh, MCs for the next hour. So right after we get done playing the little video, they'll be coming up here in a second. So do you want to introduce yourself? Yes. And uh, so everybody knows what's coming up in a couple of minutes here. Yeah. Hello, I'm Tara Linegar. I'm an intern here at Japan House and we'll be seeing you for the next hour or so. Hi, I'm Caleb Apperson, also a fellow intern here at Japan House and um, happy, happy to guide you through a day of fun. So just like me, we thought, you know, they have the good personality. They can talk to anybody probably. I don't know. Is that the truth? Hopefully. Yeah, good. <laughs> Hopefully. That's what happens. You just kind of run around. And uh, thanks to Gio, who's behind the camera today, and Andrew, who uh, both make this all happen and make this go on live, which is amazing. I don't know how they do all this. And then also Diana on our team. She has become like the uh, technical guru and somehow is able to uh, help us out all the time, as you guys can see. So here we go to the live video. Thank you so much. <laughs> 